Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Tyndall from Balanced Doctor. In my unique position as someone who was in clinical dentistry for 16 years and now as a professional life coach for dentists and dental professionals, I'm really excited to share with you some top tips on how to be an even better communicator. These tips will boost your communication skills with your colleagues, your teams and with your patients. Very few of us, if any, received any formal training in communication. This seems so crazy when communication is at the heart of everything we do. With exceptional and compassionate communication, everything is possible. There are four cornerstones to compassionate communication. And if you can make sure you are doing these four things, then you'll be definitely having some really valuable conversations. Number one, be present. This is about really listening and observing what the other person in your conversation is saying. I know from first-hand experience how busy the days are in a dental practice. There's a long list of patients to be seen, there's lots going on, and we can be very focused on what needs to get done. In effect, we are time-pressured people. Being present is about pressing pause on all the busyness of your own mind and really being there to listen with all your attention. Listen to the words that are being spoken, but also notice the non-verbal communication clues of the speaker. Interpret what their body language is telling you. Often we assume that we are really good at this, but it's definitely something that needs practice. The second cornerstone is reflecting. This is about listening accurately to the person who is talking and then reflecting back to them their feelings and the words that they used. The purpose of reflecting allows the speaker to hear their own thoughts so that they can focus on what they said and how they are feeling. One example might sound a bit like this. From what you've said, it sounds like you really value being able to have one day off a week. It allows you as the listener to show the person speaking that you are trying to perceive the world as they see it. This is really a great thing to do when you are discussing treatment plans with your patients. It's so important that you have accurately heard what the patient has told you. After all, the only person who can tell you if you have understood them correctly or not is the patient themselves. They will feel listened to and understood if you do this. Also reflect back their non-verbal communication. We can feel shy to talk about someone else's body language back to them, but it can provide a completely different perspective about something they may have not noticed or realized. You could say something like, I noticed that you were wringing your hands like this when we were talking about what to expect after your procedure. I understand your anxiety, so how can I support you? The third cornerstone is the value of silence. In conversation, typically our thoughts flow very fast, often overtaking the pace of the conversation itself. It's very easy to jump in and interrupt another person's words. There is real value in pausing before you reply in a conversation. The silent pause makes you a more powerful communicator. The pause has a few roles. It allows you to gather your thoughts, choose your words, and very often the person who is speaking may fill the gap and continue to talk themselves, therefore extending their own thought process. What they add in at this point may be the really important piece of the conversation. It is a powerful way to acknowledge and honour what the speaker is telling you. 
It does take a little practice to feel comfortable with the silence. I started out by counting slowly to five in my head. Otherwise, the pause will always feel longer than it actually is. I'd like you to count to five with me right now, in your head or out loud. One, two, three, four, five. That's how long a decent pause should be, or even longer. We are used to so much instantaneous communication today. Texts, emails, the idea of pausing can easily feel foreign to us. It takes patience and confidence to pause, but try this out with your next patient interaction. Being curious is the fourth part of compassionate communication. Genuine curiosity and interest demonstrates that you are a great communicator and it shows people that you really do care. A few years ago, I was at an appointment with a family doctor. I'd like to think that I can give a pretty good history to a problem. And when I'd finished giving my history, the doctor didn't even ask me one question. I expected that he'd want to examine me to see what I was talking about. But no, he merely told me that he was going to refer me and that I can wait to hear from the specialist. That was it. Appointment over. No interest in me whatsoever. At the time, I was a bit shocked by his lack of interest and I didn't say anything. But what was the result of this interaction? Well, I didn't return to see that doctor again. Your patients can really tell when you are genuinely interested in what they are telling you and when you're just getting the job done. Being able to show them you are interested in what they are telling you shows them that you respect them and what they are going through. Try to ask questions that demonstrate that you really want to know the answers, but be careful to avoid too many with yes or no answers because those questions don't give you very much information at all. One phrase that I use very often with my clients is, tell me more about that. These words invite deeper thinking and people will share more of their thoughts and feelings with you. For me, when I ask someone to tell me more, it's like winding up a little wind up toy and letting it go. The person who is talking runs with the conversation and I learn so much more. It really does make me smile. Try and be curious at work and at home. I know you'll notice the added value in your conversations and people will really appreciate that you are a fabulous listener. So to wrap up, let me summarize the four cornerstones of compassionate communication. Number one, be present. Number two, reflect back what you see and hear. Number three, learn to love the value of silence. And number four, be genuinely curious. I hope you now get out there and practice these four things. I'd love to know how you find using these four points. And if you have any great ideas of your own to share, please do. Let's continue this conversation about compassionate communication I'm Dr. Karen Tyndall, Balanced Doctor, and it's been my pleasure to be here on Burst TV today.